My name is Linda Rourke, and I want to share a little bit about my journey, about how God redeemed a sinner like me for his glory. I grew up in Southern California, and with I had two sisters, and we lived in Whittier from the ages of 5 to 14. And we had a great childhood. My mom and dad, they were great parents. They had a great marriage. We felt loved and, and cared for, and we did family vacations, so we had a, a great family unit. But as I, got, as I started getting older and I got into the eighth grade, um, I started kind of going off track. That was my, I, my first boyfriend was in the eighth grade. So my girlfriend and I, she would spend the night in the summer and we would sneak out of our house and go hang out with my boyfriend and, her, and our friends. So that started in eighth grade. We never got caught, but by the time I was summer before ninth grade, um, we, were, we were really getting into trouble. And so um, we, my mom would drop us off at the end of Beach Boulevard, or end of, I'm sorry, the end of Whittier Boulevard, and we would tell her we were taking the, be the bus to the beach and we would hitchhike. So we hitchhiked every day to Huntington Beach, hung out by the pier, and, um, and never got caught doing that either. So we were pretty good at, at lying, and so, um, so that was that summer. And then summer before ninth grade, we moved to Fountain Valley, my family and I. And so I started going to La Quinta, and at that point I met a guy and we started dating. We were together for five years. And we, um, we just started to kind of, uh, I mean, we had a ton of friends at school, and we, there was house parties. So our friends would have house parties during the day during school, so we would ditch and go to these house parties as much as we could without getting kicked out of school. So by the time we gra I graduated high school, um, a few years after high school, my boyfriend and I broke up, and then um, I started hanging out with his cousin, and um, she was dating a guy who was, his, his, her boyfriend's friends were drug dealers in our high school. They were three years older, and I thought I would never hang out with those guys because they were bad news. But I started hanging out with her, so um, I started dating one of her boyfriend's friends, and I lived with this guy for eight years, and we, you know, we did drugs and stuff, and so we would go to the river and party, and I was in and out of jobs during that time, and so after we broke up, it just didn't work out for us after eight years. Then I was single for a couple of years, and my sister and I would go up to LA, and we would go to clubs, and you know, we had a big group, a friend group there as well, and so after that, you know, I started, my dad, my dad passed away of a massive heart attack when I was 29, and so that was devastating for us, and um, and then I just started wanting to change my life, but at that point, I just was so deep into it. I just, I had no power to change my life. I read every self-help book there was, and, and nothing could change. I went to a counselor, you know, I knew I wanted to change, but I just couldn't. And so, um, so I just remember one night crying out to God and saying, if you're out there, please help me, because I just couldn't change my life. And, you know, we grew up, our, our family life, we prayed before our meals, so I, I had a little bit of an idea of who God was, but, but we weren't born again Christians, and so I cried out to God, and then it was four months later that I set a date that, okay, this is the date I'm going to quit partying, and I'm going to change my life, so I had tried to do that so many times before, but I'd always go back, but this time it was different, so six months after that, I looked back, and I realized that I had no desire, the desire was gone, but uh, when I did quit that, that date that I set, my sister went in the hospital, my older sister that was 37, she went in the hospital with a virus in her heart. And nine months later, she passed away. So I was living with my mom, and my, she had twin girls who were in fifth grade, and they came to live with us along with my nephew, who was a couple of years older. So at that point, I thought, well, my life had started changing during those nine months, and I look at that, and I realize that God was preparing me for what he had ahead. And um, he, um, they moved in with us, and then um, my life just started changing. And you know, I wanted to. I I thought I'll just start going to church so I can make new friends because it was friends were always important to me. My social life was a big part of my life all the way through, and so I thought, well, I'll just I go, I'll start going to church to make new friends. And I knew about Calvary Chapel because. You know, I had gone there years before. I'd heard of Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa, but I went once and then I, I left because I, I didn't want to go in. And so I, I had a, there was a coworker that I was working with and she invited me to Calvary Chapel Pacific Coast. So I went and a few months into going, I went forward and gave my life to Christ. And then I realized that
that I could have a personal life-changing relationship. So about a year, a year into that, I, I left there and came to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, and got plugged into the New Believers Fellowship and was there for about three to, three to four years. And then I started serving as one of the leaders. I was also going to Joyful Life on Friday mornings and going to every study I could. And I remember when I first started coming here, I, I would sit there on the, in the pew and I just remember thinking that this life, this new life was just was too good to be true. I just, just had no idea that it would be so good. And I just kind of thought that maybe, you know, um, I thought that it was just a dream that I was in, that it, could I really be going to heaven? You know, God had a plan and purpose for my life because I'm such a deep thinker. And so I just remember before I got saved, I had to lean on my own understanding and trying to figure out life and, you know, what was life? I was afraid I'd get to the end of my life and, and then I would, um, I would have regrets and stuff. So, you know, I feel like the Lord used that in my life to bring me to him because I was such a, a, a thinker. And so, um, so I, I just l listened to the word being taught and it just started to change my life. And so my nieces, by this time they were in eighth grade and, and I applied for them to come to school here at Calvary Chapel Junior High and they got accepted. And I just remember being so excited and then it just dawned on me that, um, that you know, as we delight in the Lord, he gives us the desires of our heart. And I realized that that wasn't my desire. I was so excited, but I realized, oh, that wasn't my desire, but that was the desire that God put in my heart. And so they started coming to school here and they went all the way through high school and I just wanted them to have a, a different life than I had and, and my sister had, because my sister was an alcoholic. And so, um, I, so, they, so I tried really hard. My mom and I, she, my mom was running my, our family business. And so I would pick the kids up at school in the afternoon, my mom would take them in the morning and we kind of did it together. And, and yet she was so busy with work and everything. So, so, you know, I just, my passion was just to see these girls um, know Jesus. And so then, you know, so then my life just got better and better. And, you know, I mean, obviously there's trials when you're, no matter whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, but the difference is, is that God is working through your trials and he's with you through your trials. And he, he, he lets us, you know, enter into prayer and, and he, he gives us grace to walk through our trials and he changes us. And the other thing that was just so enlightening for me was that we, I was actually going to go to heaven and and this isn't all there is, we're just passing through this life. And so the word of God transformed my life. And I started working at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa in the church office a few years after I started coming here. And um, I, I've worked here ever since, about tw probably 23 years. And I can honestly say it is, I love my job. I love the people I work with. Really, there's not a day that goes by that I don't love coming to work. It's kind of as strange people would say, but, but I do. I love everybody I get to work with, the things that I get to do. I'm still single, but I, tr I get to you know put my all into the ministry, and I, I get to travel around the world and, and do conferences, and, and just I just am so blessed to be here. And again, I'm just so thankful for all that God's done in my life. He just took the years that the locusts had eaten, and he restored them, and just made beauty out of ashes in my life, in my family's life, and um, I'm just so grateful for the, all that he's done. So thank you for listening.